you are watching Showcase. And coming up in this program, we find out all about the vibe and versatility of the competitive world of hip hop and fitness aerobics. And the amazing story of one young man's ice hockey dream coming true. Pretoria born and bred Adelson Kutsia has recently been signed by the Boston Junior Bruins Ice Hockey Club in Massachusetts. They play in the US Premier Hockey League and it's the pinnacle of skill development in the United States. It's a long way from his roots in rugby and football mad Chwani. So what was it that attracted the 16 year old to ice hockey in the first place? I fell in love with ice hockey because it was a really different sport. It wasn't like rugby, it wasn't like soccer, which was all over the world. It's all like everybody plays hockey, plays soccer and rugby and it's just a general thing everybody does. And so it was a really interesting thing to find a new sport. Like someone just told me, hey, there's ice hockey at this ice rink. There were like only one or two in South Africa. And I was like, well, let me give it a try. So I tried when I was four or five years old. Um, my coach was, uh, oh, I can't even remember, it was, it was so long ago, but it was the nicest guy. It was a really, really great experience, and then I was like, I'll go again, and again, and then I mean, I played for so long that it became a just a love that I had to do every single day, otherwise it felt empty. I've tried everything. I've tried every single sport to try except for hockey, but I've tried rugby, all the sports I've played, like rugby and soccer, and what is, I played, tried netball, tried basketball. Um, it never really got me the, the thrill of hockey, the thrill of the speed, the thrill of the, just getting a goal for your team. It just never gave me the thrill of what hockey ever gave me. Playing for the Junior Bruins is a step towards playing the game at the elite level of the NHL in the USA. So it's a major commitment by the young man and also a huge opportunity to prove himself in the big time. Now I can start at the beginning that I actually saw the potential in Adelson and then I've actually taken to a lot of sports and then what Adelson did is he excelled in the ice hockey thing, he really enjoyed that. that but I knew from a young age that uh, because of the sport and because the sport is so small in South Africa, at some other stage I'll have to expose him to the international uh, arena so that he can see in the uh, international arena how it's done and see if he actually fits in there. And that's why I flew him and from some of his friends overseas to go and see how the sport is played there and to see if they fit in there. Which is interesting, they noticed Otterson and of the guys I've taken over, 75% of them are playing or have been playing overseas, or are still playing. Uh, not actually at the level Otterson has been playing, uh, because they didn't start at the same age as he started. Um, but I've learned a lot of things uh, in the process. And, and, and one of the things is that South Africa's training is not of such a nature that you will be able to compete on the other side. The other, the other thing that I've learned overseas is that what happens here, because we don't have the knowledge, these children are, are, are damaged in a certain sense. I want to use the example. Olsen is playing hockey with his wrong, wrong hand. And this was done from the beginning because uh, the coaches and stuff are self-taught. They are not trying to train smaller people or kids from a younger age. And then what happened, he's still playing with his wrong hand, and that's unfixable. So it took a lot of hard work from, from the uh, Boston Bruins skills coach to work with him to get him to the level that he can compete when he had to go to the tryouts. Uh, the experience when I went overseas in 2016 was, it was me and my friends, we just went because we were, we were like, let's go for a camp because America was thought of as this amazing hockey country. It was this country that was just super, a lot better at the sport. No one knew why, it was just, better at the sport. Maybe it was more people, maybe it was more coaches that were just better. So when I got there, it was a, a completely different professional environment where here it's more of a, oh, I'm just going to go to hockey and play, where it's a more big professional environment, massive sports center you had to go to, coaches you had to check into, um, and just a lot of, a lot of fun I had also in just but to be honest, it was just a really, really fun experience to have with my friends. It wasn't thought of as being a professional experience. It wasn't thought of as being like the new hockey star. It was just like, okay, well, I'm going to have some fun with my friends as a camp. And then while I was practicing with some of my friends, I heard uh, one of the coaches who walked up to me and they were like, do you, like, you want to come play here? And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? You, know, you want to come play here? It's like, yeah, we'll give you a contract if you want to come back and play for the season. Like, yeah, definitely, I'll, I'll take it. And I, Took me into a room, we had a, a long talk, gave me a contract, and then I came back to Africa a month later, and I was so surprised. I was like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, but I didn't even know if I was gonna go to America. But then 
Late on I went, started playing for that team, played for much different teams before I actually came, went to tryouts so for this massive team, which everybody everywhere came from Virginia, from everywhere, just to come and try out for this team. Came up and I was like, wow, this is, I have no chance for this. This, I have no chance of making this ever. This waits like three, four thousand people coming up here just to, just to try out for a team. Um, no, that's also surprising. Like three, four days later, they were like, do you want a contract to play? When Arlson had to leave for overseas, I know he was a young man, he was 16 years old, and it's not an easy decision for us as family to take. But what I say to Arlson is the following, Arlson's success has a price to pay. Are we as family prepared to pay the price uh, to, to take part abroad or to, to achieve a success? And we decided that, yes, we were prepared to pay the price. So then we took Arlson, and that's why we up and down between the states and here. So that's one thing that you, one decision that you must make as a family. There is a price for success, and you'll have to pay, pay the price. If you don't want to pay the price, you're not going to get there. How important was it for us? It is not, it is not that important. Um, I'm more a guy, I want his education. And this is a very important part. I mean, Olsen went overseas, he's going to Marlborough High School, where he's got a scholarship because of his hockey. Um, and what I'm trying to get into this is that sport's been used to enhance his qualifications. So who was the first person that Delson called when he was awarded the contract by the Junior Bruins? My dad, definitely my dad. My dad was the first person I, I called. Um, my sister was close to me, so I told her and then called my dad. Um, just to give him the great news because he was, he, I was doubting so much that I was going to make it that he was like, no, it's fine, like, hey, we can play for a different team, it's okay. And then when I got the news, everybody was just so surprised that I actually got onto this almost professional team with a contract from <laughs> From like a kid's coming from South Africa. When I got there the first time and I sat there with this, the owner of the, of the uh, Elite Boston Bruins, his name is Chris, and I said to him, Chris, be honest to me, what is my son's chance? And he went like this and says, listen here, there's a problem here. Um, there's a lot of things that have been taught wrong, wrongly. It's going to be hard to fix it. I don't think we're going to be able to fix it. One. Second thing he says, the hockey IQ, which we call the hockey IQ in the US, USA, is not taught to this, this child. He has no hockey IQ. And I went to the following thing, I says, what can I do to rectify this? And he says, he has to do three times more than the other guys do. He has to be here for a year. And I said, but can I tell you one thing about Arlson? He never disappoints. And he says to me, we will see. And what happened, uh, Arlson did three times more than, than, than uh, um, what they wanted. And he was invited to the tryouts. And I wasn't even there. And then we got to the spot. Arlson phones me and he thinks he's not going to make it. So he goes like this, he says, my oh, dad, I don't think I'm going to play for the Bruins. I'm going to play for the school team next year, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why he said that. And I said, okay, play wherever you feel fit. And then he flew down to, to uh, the Venezuelan coast where his sister studying, and he was visiting her there. And the next moment he phones me and he's shouting, jumping up and down. They offered me a contract. And, I, and he says, I'm playing for the Boston Bruins. And I said, but I don't understand. I thought you were going to play. No, 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 no. I'm playing for the Boston Bruins. So what I'm trying to explain here, even us didn't expect it. There was 4,000 people from all over the United States taking part, wanted to play for this team. He's a South African, and I remember what Chris said to me. And here he's chosen to play for the team, and he's a designated uh, defenseman for the team. So he is, he's changed as a person. He made him so happy, and, 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 and then he learned a lot of stuff. He learned how, how hard work it is, what you have to put in to get there. I'm very happy for him. I was ecstatic. Um, I, I knew that he was so worried about it. Um, also because when we got there, when we came back last year in December and we went back in January, we didn't realize that so much time um, has been spent on ice. We thought they were going to go on holiday as well. So we didn't care much about it. But when we, came, when we went back, we realized he lost a lot of ice time. So we were really worried about that. But we were all fine with it. We said to him, you know what? If you don't make the team, you'll play for the school, you'll love, you, all your friends are there. Um, so I actually prepared him so if something does happen, it's fine for you to play for the school because we want him to be happy. Um, we, it's, it's not our dream to play ice hockey there, it's his dream. We are there to support him. So whatever he decides, that's fine for us. And when he eventually, when we, we went to Sonisha on the island to visit her for a week before we came back to South Africa, and I got the email the morning, he kept on asking for three days, Mom, have you received an email? I, I said, no, <laughs> just relax, we'll get it as soon as this. 
And he says, but he's so worried because he thinks some of the other kids have already received an email. I said, you know, just relax. We'll see about it. And as soon as I got the email, I showed it to him and he immediately phoned his dad. He was just, I am so, oh, you can't believe it. I'm on the team. So I was happy for him. Um, it, is a, it is an effort um, for us as family and it is um, to be away from each other for nine months. And as soon as you hear the news, he's on the team, you immediately go to, ah, oh, there I'm going for another year. But even before, I mean, before we got the, the news that he's going to be on the team, we've already made plans for the next two years. Um, he's already got his, visa, his student visa, so we know that even though, even if he doesn't make the team, we will still stay there. He will finish his school in the US. He will either play for the school team then. So it was, it was, already sorted. I study at St. George's University School of Medicine in, the, in Grenada in the Caribbean and it's, I am in my third year of pre-medical sciences and there's a growing population of South Africans so I'm very at home there of course and my brother and my mom had come down to visit me because they had a week of school holidays and it was a week just before my exams and I remember my brother sitting next to me and telling me uh, he really doesn't think he's gonna make it and he, he doesn't want to make it you know what he's fine he's happy just going to school there so I go, why do you feel like this? He goes, no, they're all so amazing and so good. And he couldn't think that he ever could have a, an opportunity with these extraordinary players from all over the country. So I said, of course, that's understandable. And then he got the phone call. And the first thing he came to me, he said, can you believe it? I made it. <laughs> he was so shocked. It was almost like he couldn't process that it had happened to him out of all the kids that tried out. So I just felt such joy, um, happiness for him that this this dream had been realized. Signing a contract for the team on the other side of the world in the hotbed of ice hockey is very exciting. But what does the contract with the Boston Junior Bruins entail? I don't think it entails I play for a whole season, so it's about six, seven months of permanent hockey. This is every day, every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and I think Friday we have two, three hours of practice with off ice and on ice, and we have tournaments, we have buses, we have to take go to tournaments at completely other different states. We have full scholarships for most of the universities after after the contract's over. They'll plan it for any scholarship for most universities that you want to go to. And the contract entails a whole full season of one of the best teams, which I am on. Adelson's journey to the Junior Bruins is very much as a result of his drive, ambition, work ethic and talent. But he could not have done so without the unequivocal support of his whole family, something his mother feels very strongly about. It is of the utmost importance for your entire family or your immediate household family to support you. I can tell you this, although my son is an amazing person, um, I mean, every parent thinks he's, he, their children are just the best, I can tell you that if us as a, as a close-knit family weren't supportive of each other, this could not have worked for, for neither of us. Um, with my daughter studying overseas, I mean, even that, that was a, a big thing for us to adjust to, to the fact that all of a sudden she's away. I mean, she's always been in the house. We had this rule, not until you're 18, you'll sleep out. Not until you're 18, you'll go somewhere. So for us, it was a big deal. And now all of a sudden for him to go there, I mean, I think the, the biggest um, part is for my husband, the adjustment for my husband, because for me, it's fine. I have Adelson, Adelson has me um, in the US. So Nisha has all of her university friends and he's in South Africa. So I think the biggest part is for him to be alone, yeah? Although he, he comes and visits, um, I would say it is of the utmost importance to support your child. If he knows that you are behind him, doesn't matter what, whether he makes it or not, he will thrive. Amazing, without, without support of my, my dad and mom and sister, I would have never gotten there. I would have never, I was for a patch, I was like, for a year, I just couldn't play any more hockey. I played it so often where I was like, I just can't play anymore, I don't like the sports. And they were supporting me, they were like, you have to go, come on, you're good at the sport, like, go keep playing. And then Jim pushing me through to keep playing the sport really pushed me into actually becoming falling in love with it again and pushing to be the best player again. Many parents are hopeful that their sons or daughters can follow in Adelson's footsteps. So what is the best way to go about reaching that goal? How do I get my child to go there? I'm in the South African scenario, and here I must explain the catch-22 situation. The catch-22 situation is here. If you have a small child, and you, uh, ice hockey is a very scientific thing, 
and you are trained in South Africa, it's going to be very hard to break into any uh, ice hockey playing country in the world. What you must understand from the beginning is that you must get your child there for at least some time, I'm talking about a year or whatever. You yourself as parent must see what the difference is, what must not done and be done. Bring him back here, let him play in a very early age, take him over to the other side. I've, I must say one thing, our, our, our kids are awesome. They are stronger than these guys because of what they eat and, and who they are. Um, they can all make it on, on the other side. It's how we as parents guide them through life, what we as parents put in, and, 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 and the opportunities that we give them. There is, the opportunity is not in South Africa when it comes to ice hockey. Here we're going to do rugby and things like that. And in the United States, we have more options. We can do baseball and, and ice hockey and, 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 and gridiron rugby and stuff like that. And this is my message to all these parents. Don't be afraid. Take the chance. Take him there. He will not waste your money. Our kids are worth it. And we wish Adelson could see all the very best as he reaches for the stars. Let's hope we see him flying on the ice in the NHL very soon.